Have you ever wondered what the fastest spaceship is? Could the Hail Mary from Andy Weir's novel Project Hail Mary be the fastest ship in the universe? Definitely not! Have you seen the series before? <laughs> hey nerds, I'm Abby. Welcome to Gammons. We're on episode 5, The Hail Mary. Now before we get into it, here is a reminder of the leaderboard so far and a piece of housekeeping. I have retracted my reworking of the Star Trek ships. You see, warp speed is different for each show, but with Enterprise they rescale the value to warp factor to the power of 10 over 3. Now originally I rescaled the ships to match the updated warp scale. But someone very rightly pointed out that this rescaling is actually in-universe. Therefore, the NX-01 and the NCC-1701 in the Star Trek universe still follows the equation warp factor cubed. So I've corrected their times on the leaderboard, which changed absolutely nothing. <laughs> Now, in the last episode as well, we had our very first disqualification. The Heart of Gold is out. A few of you felt a bit hard done by by this. Um, some people wanted a recount. No can do. Now, I get that you think that the ship is instantaneous and so by default that it would win. But here's my reasoning. Number one. If all instantaneous ships just win by default, then it's a really dull series and we can't differentiate between them. Secondly, the Heart of Gold is not actually instantaneous. It takes time to calculate the path and then time to return to normal after arrival. And that is time that we are unable to calculate and so we can't actually say what its speed is. And number three, it can't win by default because it's not even the fastest ship in Douglas Adams' entire universe. It's not the fastest ship in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So I stand by my disqualification of the Heart of Gold from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm really sorry to disappoint all the nerds out there. But don't worry, there will be no disqualifications today. We're doing the Hail Mary from Andy Weir's novel Project Hail Mary. On its way to us as a movie starring Ryan Gosling, sometime in 2026 apparently. I thought it was next year. Bit disappointed, but it's fine. I can wait another year. I think it's going to be great. He's really good casting for that role. But on to the main event. Now to give some background without giving any spoilers for Project Hail Mary, it's a story about a lone astronaut on an impossible mission to save humanity. Ryland Grace wakes up on a spaceship millions of miles from home and he's not quite sure why. I will say no more. But calculating the speed of the Hail Mary is fairly straightforward because it's an Andy Weir book, so the science is worked out in excruciating detail. And he tells us exactly what the speed is. The ship has a constant acceleration of 1.5 g up to a maximum speed of 0.92 times the speed of light. Now, because it does travel close to the speed of light, there are time dilation effects for the pilot. Less time passes for them than for us. But what matters is universe time, how long we have to wait at the finish line. It's all about us, really. Now, we're not breaking the speed of light here, so we know we're not going to be up high. <laughs> and even though Red Dwarf does break the speed of light, its acceleration is so slow that maybe we have a chance to like not be last here. So here's a reminder of the path. We go Earth to Mars, past Neptune, through the Kuiper Belt to the edge of interstellar space. We traverse the Oort Cloud to exit our solar system, head straight for Orion, swing around Orion's nebula to the edge of the Milky Way, and out across intergalactic space to reach the Andromeda Galaxy. So, like I said, the Hail Mary has a constant acceleration of 1.5 g, which will get it to its top speed in 217 days. And it will have traveled about 0.27 light years in that time. Now, once it reaches its speed of 0.92 times c, it will travel at that speed for the rest of the race until it's time to decelerate, which will again take 217 days. So this process will get the Hail Mary to Mars in 65 hours. It'll get to the Kuiper Belt in nine days, through interstellar space in 18 days, out past the Oort Cloud in about 2.5 years, Orion's Nebula in 1,632 years. 
reaching the edge of the Milky Way galaxy in 29,363 years, and finally traversing intergalactic space to reach the Andromeda galaxy in 2,719,203 years. And there we have it. Hail Mary, not in last place. I say that's a win. Ship some things around here. Red Dwarf moves down to last place and Hail Mary rocks in at number four. Cool. All right, let's pick our next ship. There's been quite a few in the comments. Um, I tried to jiggle stuff around a bit more, so who knows what's gonna come out right now. I can't look because the colors might give things away. It is, oh, it's not just a Star Trek Discovery. I feel like I seemed really disappointed. Like I'm not disappointed to do Discovery. It's just that there's already a few Star Trek ships on the board and I was trying to be different. Um, there's so much in here. How did I get Star Trek again? All right, okay. Well, look, it is what it is. We're doing Discovery, Spore Drive. Cool, I'm excited. Okay, so comment any recommendations that you have. Let me know what you think about Project Hail Mary. Let me know what you think about the Hail Mary, um, if you're excited for the movie. And, um, yeah, Discovery. Hopefully, uh, maybe I'll just make sure that there's no Star Trek ships in the jar for the next round. <laughs> We're gonna have so many subcategories by the time we get through everything anyway. All right, okay, thanks for hanging out with me. Oh, sorry, wait, um, will you follow me? I would love if you would follow me on YouTube. That would be awesome. If you're not already following me there, uh, that would be really cool. I would really appreciate that. Bye.